and you're live. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the council meeting of January 31st, 2022. I would like to remind our council and citizens that February is African Heritage Month in Nova Scotia. It is a time to recognize the long-standing history of people of African descent in the development of Canada. The theme for African Heritage Month 2022 promotes all the ways and all the voices of African Nova Scotians who blaze the trail for change despite anti-Black racism. The 2022 African Heritage Month provincial, provincial theme through our eyes, the voices of African Nova Scotians. This theme also aligns with the United Nations International De Decade for People of African Descent, 2015 to 2024. The key goals of the decade is to increase recognition and participation of people of African descent in all the aspects of society. The Kentville Accessibility and Inclusion Action Plan charts the way forward as we work to create a more inclusive, accessible, welcoming community in Kentville that exists and operates from a place of peace and friendship. I would ask you all to keep uh, abreast of uh, the information that you'll see on our social media and on our website with regards to various events that will be ongoing daily through the month of February. Unfortunately, due to COVID, they will all be on mostly all online events. So please stay tuned and participate when you can. This meeting is being held on Zoom in respect of COVID-19 protocols and is being live streamed on Facebook Live. There's no public attendance permitted. The most up-to-date meeting package is on the Town of Kentville website. This meeting is called to order. Have all of the councillors received and reviewed their meeting packages? Does any member of council have information pertaining to a matter before this council which has not been publicly circulated? I will remind members of council that we are in decision-making mode. We should be mindful of our decision-making wheel and we have committed to making balanced and respectful decisions and adhering to our code of conduct. We will be voting by poll. The chair will call your name and ask how say you. This method permits us to verbally record your vote. Are there any conflict of interest issues we should be aware of before the meeting commences? CAO Trope, could you please take the roll call? Yes, thank you, Mayor Snow. And based on all the boxes and names on the screen, it looks like we have all of council participating here tonight. So you have quorum for this evening's meeting. Excellent, thank you uh, very much, CAO. We have been provided with a proposed agenda. I ask for a motion to accept the agenda as circulated. Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor York, thank you. All those in favor? Those opposed? The motion is carried, thank you. Uh, we have three sets of minutes tonight uh, to approve. The first set of minutes are from the November 29th, 2021 council meeting distributed for approval. Are there any changes uh, to those minutes? No changes, so the minutes are approved as distributed. You have before you the minutes of the December 13th, 2021 count special council meeting distributed for your approval. Are there any changes to those minutes? None, the minutes are approved as distributed. And we had one more special council meeting on December 17th. Have, and those minutes have been distribu distributed for approval. If there are no changes, they are approved as distributed. No changes, all right, very well. All right, we'll move on to our business uh, arising. Uh, the first uh, item of business is uh, the Intermunicipal Service Agreement update and CAO Trope, could you uh, please provide the council with an update on our new IMSA? Yes, so thank you, Mayor. And uh, for, uh, for council, as folks are aware, the uh, Intermunicipal Service Agreement pilot for uh, Valley Waste and King's Transit, the pilot doesn't go live until we have uh, the executive in place in order to start that project. So I just wanted to let council know that um, a, a two job ads are actually out. One is for the um, executive lead and the other is for the executive lead of finance. So those have been posted. Um, so they went out through Wolfville as the municipal site, but then we're on available now online through multiple mediums. And there was an intermunicipal service agreement meeting and there is going to be a committee 
will be struck between uh, mayors and warden and the CAOs in order to review the applications that come in and then do the formal interview process. So I just wanted to keep council abreast that um, things are moving and we anticipate uh, within the next couple of weeks, we'd be in a position where we'd be able to go through um, the applications or at least the review committee can go through those and we'll be able to get the pile moving forward. So just a quick update tonight. All right, uh, thank you uh, very much, CAO. Um, we lost uh, one of our, uh, our members of council due to an internet uh, issue. Uh, so uh, she does, uh, she's rebooting right now and, uh, and will join us. And I would ask uh, that you please do use the raise hands. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to keep my eyes on, uh, on who's who. Deputy Mayor, you have your hand up. Thank you, Worship. Uh, CEO Cook, I'm just wondering about the um, ad that went out, it's sort of how wide a sphere that is. Is it all over Canada or is it just Atlantic Canada or? Um, yeah, so great question. It was, uh, it was both uh, local and nationally. Um, okay. and, and part of what happened is it wasn't limited just also to if an individual would, would like to apply because also you might have, in fact, like an accounting firm might be interested in applying or whatnot. So the, the mechanism to go out was through um, all the individual sites and sources you would normally find, but also we kind of went out as if you were doing an RFP as well in the event there was a company might be bidding on this as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, just uh, for the record, uh, Councilor Maxwell has uh, has rejoined us. Uh, she had uh, internet issues. Uh, Councilor Gerard. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, just curious, Dan, what what uh, what's the representation going to be on the executive committee for the hiring? I know um, I know sometimes because the counties have bigger populations and stuff, they have two reps. So is there is has there been any discussion on that? Uh, that number hasn't been finalized yet. Um, just right now, because of the sheer numbers, typically when you would meet, you'd probably have 14, 16 people between the CAOs and, and the mayors and wardens. So um, at this moment in time, the actual committee hasn't been struck. That's the next piece to be done. Uh, so I don't have the exact number at this point to report on that. Thank you. Councillor Zabian. Thank you, Mayor Snow. I think you neglected to ask council if there was any additions or deletions to the agenda. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, the motion went through as uh, uh, an agenda as circulated and the motion passed. That business is uh, is gone now. We're, uh, we're now doing uh, business arising. Yeah, but you usually call if there's any additions or deletions. That's the, you always, you've been asking that for years now and my year in a couple of months, you've asked that at every meeting. I have, and I did not tonight. I'm the chair, I decide. Thank you. You can't decide the agenda, what's on the agenda. Oh my goodness. We're moving on. We have a motion. The motion is passed. You didn't ask council if they want to add anything to the agenda. Councilor Sabian, you're now out of order. We're moving on to our next uh, piece of business. Uh, we have the recommendations arising from the CAC meeting on January 10th, and they will be read and moved by Councilor Sabian. Councilor Sabian, uh, the floor is yours. At the December 13, 2021 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, CAO Dan Troke reviewed the 2022 calendar of meeting dates for Council Advisory Committee and Council. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the proposed calendar of Council and Council Advisory Committee meeting dates and times for 2022. I so move. Thank you. And a seconder? Councillor Huntley, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the proposed calendar of Council and Council Advisory Committee meeting dates and times for 2022. Is there any discussion on this matter? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the proposed calendar of Council and Council Advisory Committee meeting dates and times for 2022. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councillor Gerard? Yes. Councillor Huntley? Yes. Councillor Maxwell? Yes. Councillor York? Yes. Councillor Zabian? Yes. And I say yes, the motion is carried. Councillor Zabian, next one. The December 13th, 2021 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director Deb Cole presented the sundry write-offs for recreation and sanitary sewer items. 
Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the write-off of the sun-dry receivables in the amount of $33,623.12. I so move. Thank you. A seconder? Councilor Maxwell, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the write-off of the sundry receivables in the amount of $33,623.12. Is there any discussion on this matter? There being no discussion, are you ready for the question? The question is on the adoption of the motion to approve the write-off of the sundry receivables in the amount of $33,623.12. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councillor Gerard? Yes. Councillor Huntley? Yes. Councillor Maxwell? Councillor York? Yes. Councillor Zabian? Yes. And I say yes, the motion is carried. Next. At the January 10th, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director Deb Kroll presented a request to withdraw funds, funds from two of the town's capital reserves to support the purchase of a loader vehicle. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the withdrawal of 125,000 from town capital reserve to partially fund the purchase of transportation equipment. I so move. Thank you, and a seconder? Councillor Huntley, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the withdrawal of $125,000 from two town capital reserves to partially fund the purchase of transportation equipment. Is there any discussion on this matter? There being no discussion, are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the withdrawal of 125,000 from two town capital reserves to partially fund the purchase of the transportation equipment. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councillor Gerard? Yes. Councillor Huntley? Yes. Councillor Maxwell? Councillor York? Yes. Councillor Zabian? Yes. And I say yes, the motion is carried. Next. At the January 10th, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director Gentleman described the existing land use bylaws as it pertains to accessory dwelling units and the need for changes to the maximum size of these buildings. Council Advisory Committee recommends the following. That Council approve the first reading of the land use bylaw amendment on the matter of auxiliary dwelling units too. Align the maximum square footage for an auxiliary dwelling unit within a single family dwelling with the National Building Code, which is 80% of the gross floor space area of the main dwelling, up to a maximum of 80 square meters without limitations on the number of bedrooms. Allow detached auxiliary, auxiliary dwelling units, garden suites to have a maximum floor area of 80% of the gross floor area of the main dwelling, not to exceed 1,000 square feet. I so move. Thank you. And a seconder? Councillor Huntley, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve first reading of the land use bylaw amendment on the matter of auxiliary dwelling units to align the maximum square footage of the ADU within a single family dwelling with the National Building Code, which is 80% of the gross floor space area of the main dwelling up to a maximum of 80 square meters without limitation on the number of bedrooms and allow detached ADU garden suites to have a maximum floor area of 80% of the gross floor area of the main dwelling not to exceed 1000 square feet. Is there any discussion on this matter? There being no discussion, are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve first reading of the land use bylaw amendment on the matter of auxiliary dwelling units to align the maximum square footage for the ADUs within a single family dwelling with the national building code, which is 80% of the gross floor space area of the main dwelling up to a maximum of 80 square meters without limitations on the number of bedrooms and allow detached ADU garden suites to have a maximum floor area of 80% of the gross floor area of the main dwelling dwelling not to exceed a thousand square feet. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Gerard? Yes. Councillor Huntley? Yes. Councillor Maxwell? Councillor York? Yes. Councillor Zabian? Yes. 
And I say yes, the motion is carried. Now I want to remind uh, Council that uh, we are scheduled for a public participation online on the 28th of February 2022 at 5 p.m. And that we will, uh, pending the outcome of that, uh, start second reading at the Council meeting on the 28th of February 2022. Councillor Zabian? At the January 10th, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, CAO Troke described policy statement G37F, which offers property owners who have suffered a total loss by fire or other circumstance to request to have their property tax waived. Residents of 16 Redden Avenue have lost their home to a fire and request that their tax be waived for March 2021. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council Advisory Committee direct the CAO to seek a new valuation for the property at 16 Redden Avenue, destroyed by fire with the PVSC. I so move. Thank you. Seconder. Deputy Mayor, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council direct the CAO to seek a new valuation of the property at 16 Redden Avenue, destroyed by fire with Property Valuation Services Corporation. Is there any discussion on this matter? There being no discussion, are you ready for the question? The question is on the adoption of the motion to direct the CAO to seek a new valuation of the property at 16 Redden Avenue, destroyed by fire with Property Valuation Services Corporation. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councillor Gerard. Councillor Huntley. Yes. Councillor Maxwell. Councillor York. Yes. Councillor Zabian. Yes. And I say yes, the motion is carried. All right, thank you very much. And we're now moving on to our uh, council reports. So this evening, uh, we're gonna do things uh, a little bit different uh, from the usual. I propose to council that each member identify their goals, their ideas for Kentville, what they want to champion over the next couple of years. Each member is being provided with seven minutes to inform council and our citizens of what they hope to accomplish through the work of council. The ideas presented this evening will be collected in the minutes and in a separate document to provide us with a guiding document for our ongoing, bus ongoing business. Council will prioritize the ideas, determine which items are already in a plan or initiative, and new initiatives will be forwarded to council for debate and approval through the budget, policy, or bylaw if required. We will also be seeking the public's input on the ideas presented. The reports of council will be submitted to record at the end of this presentation by motion. And since we're turning everything upside down, we're gonna turn the alphabet upside down as well. Councillor Zabian, you have the floor. And I will do timing here. Thank you. So the question was, what would I like to see council champion for the next two and a half years? And I. It's sad here because we know that most ideas, plans, dreams cost money, and we have to use taxpayers' money to do that. I could spend my time now talking about great ideas that I have for the town of Kenful, but the reality is I'm not much of a fantasy writer. Rather than sit here and dream up big ideas that will most likely never materialize, I would like to be brutally honest and tell you what I want to see happen in our beautiful town. I've been running a business for decades, and the basic concept is that spending has to make sense. You always wanna see a return on your investment. And sadly, in my opinion, this isn't always the case in Kenful. I'd like to see common sense plans come into action. Because I'm a realist, I would prefer to fix what's broken before wild ideas come out of the air. Some of our infrastructure is in need of repair, and I don't mean little repairs. Take Spring Garden, for example. It needs to be paved, and it should be paved now, and not part of a 10-year plan when we have the money. Some of our sidewalks are not safe and they should be repaired or replaced immediately. People choose to live in Kentville and pay a higher tax rate than the county and we need to make sure we are spending their dollars wisely. You know, we have to invest in our youth, they're our future. We need to keep them busy and active. I think we need to restore community spirit in this town because it's missing. Over the last number of years, people have been let down. For example, we all remember the local skating group who asked for a little bit of support and this council refused it. If we don't start investing in our future generation, who will? It's true that affordable housing is needed and not just in Kentville, 
but you got to remember it's not our mandate and we're not, we're not able to force anybody to bring it here. But what can this council do? I think we can work a little better with developers. We can be a little more understanding, a little more inviting and not shut them down so quickly. There have been so many lost opportunities that have been thrown away. I want to see council sit back for a second and think of how much good we can accomplish if we were more understanding of developers and their needs. We need to be more understanding and inviting to new businesses. Working well with others goes a long way. And I think one of the biggest things I wanna do is I wanna restore honesty and integrity in the town of Kenful. In my opinion, it's been missing for the last five years too. Tried my best to be part of this council and I'll be honest, tonight really woke my eyes up. Every time I come forward with a suggestion, a concern, a worry or a question, I'm dismissed disrespected and disregarded by you, Mayor Snow, in my opinion, and I think you proved it tonight. I'm my own person, and I'm not gonna sit back and watch poor decisions being made out of sheer vindictiveness and not say anything. The problem here is that there is so much background talking amongst this council and decisions made out of chamber that the group is not running the town like a business should. This council is not in a good position now, and we all know this, and every one of you here knows why. I'd like to see things change for the better for once and all. Another thing that's very important to me is that the staff at the town of Kenful is respected. We have a tremendous staff here and they're the ones who do the hard work for this town, not us. They're the stewards of this town. They were here before us, most of them, and they're gonna be here after us. The town hall belongs to them. So contrary to comments I've heard and written, it's not your house, it's their house. In closing, I wanna make a want to stress the main point, all ideas cost money, and it's really time for taxpayers to wake up and start spending taxpayers' money wisely. I think you should champion better spending. Enough with the petty legal fees, and there's been many on me. Spending every dollar like it's your own. Use your conscience when you make a decision. We were elected by the people, and I'm going to say it now, we're failing them. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor York, you have seven minutes. Thank you. Um, thank you for flipping the alphabet. I don't usually get to go near the top. So thank you for that. Um, so I chose three top priorities that I would like to focus on. Um, and I boiled them down to three points being uh, establishing a youth advisory committee. Um, there are a lot of people that we are making decisions on behalf of who don't get a legal say and they don't get to vote. Um, eons ago, we did have a youth advisory committee. Um, it has since gone to the wayside. And I would like to reintroduce that. There are a lot of um, projects that we've had on the go when youth have been invited to the table that have just taken off. So I'm thinking very specifically of two capital projects being the skate park and Oak Dean Park revitalization. And when youth were invited to those tables, we see now that they are two of the most vibrant spaces in the town of Kentville. They were designed with their ideas and now they are using them every day. We also have a group of um, students. They started at KCA. I think they've now aged out of KCA and over at Northeast Kings, the 21st century uh, space guys. They are a Lego robotics club and they've gone to competition and won competition for solving and coming up with solutions to um, municipal problems and um, things like recycling and um, tourism initiatives. So they have, there is an excess of youth ideas and gumption and I would like to capitalize on that a little bit more and create a youth advisory committee so that we can hear from them um, because we make decisions for them before they can vote and then obviously they live with those impacts much longer than most other people. So I'd like to do that. Um, I think in 2022 we need to have progressive environmental planning um, and we as a municipality have the opportunity to really help push forward some environmental goals that are, are slated for Nova Scotia and the country by 2030. Um, so thinking specifically of things like renewable en energy sources and green technologies whenever we do um, new builds for the town. So things like gray water usage and um, just making things net zero when we build. And then also finally, um, looking at the truth and reconciliation uh, calls to action that are specific to the municipalities. There are about a dozen that impact municipalities specifically, and there are about a dozen that I think we could knock off um, pretty easily, that we need to renew those promises in the truth and reconciliation programming and make sure that we as a municipality are putting that um, at the front of what we are 
are planning to do. So I don't think I went over my minute, but um, there we go. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. So I'm gonna talk about four things I had on my list. Um, one of them obviously is, is key. Um, Housing is a key priority for me. Um, so I just, you know, when I think about the town of Kempel and I think about the land that we have here, uh, have copious amounts, in fact, and, and I'd like to see us as a town promote small homes that support affordable living. Um, I have just outlined here that we're looking to approve first reading for accessory dwelling units, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we um, looked at that tonight and it's going to uh, first reading February 28th. So I'm very happy uh, to, to see that. Um, I certainly anticipate that with these new parameters um, that they'll go right through first and second, hopefully. And that's a really great uh, first step to creating more housing. Um, as a town and as a council, we should be promoting the land in the town as it becomes ripe for, de for development and expansion. And I think about the Donald Hilt connector and that some of the work has even started on that connector with some engineering work. And that uh, we as a council have given staff the, um, the go ahead to apply for any and all grants that can be used for this expansion and development. So I think that will be key to the town of Kempel. It is pleasing to see Miners Landing completing a fourth building and, and Encore's uh, development in full motion on School Street. Uh, we're growing as a town and so therefore we're growing as a community. Um, that being said, I think more can be done. Um, you know, looking to work with developers and residents to provide all citizens who wish to reside in the town of Kempel an equal opportunity. There are affordable programs um, through the feds um, that permit financing at higher than normal loan to value ratios. And perhaps that's something that uh, we could investigate more and provide even packages to contractors, et cetera, that could be um, considered under planning combined with economic development. So that's just a little synopsis around housing. Um, the PACE program uh, is something. Um, I'd like to see us move forward uh, with the PACE incentive program. Um, you know, I certainly want the town to be in keeping with the reduction of, of greenhouse gas emissions. And, you know, in financing energy efficiency, it's a great way to working in towards the reduction of the emissions. And I think we need to get on board with energy financing, provided it fits with our mandate. I looked at Bridgewater and Cumberland County, District of Digby, Wolfville, HRM. And I think this would be another great attractor to reside in Kempel. Programs such as this are important for our residents. Uh, to save on energy and, and help us as a town to meet our goals to becoming a more sustainable community. I think it's important to note that amongst all the good works that are being done to make homes more efficient, that there is some discussion right now on behalf of Nova Scotia Power to commence a net metering program uh, as a critical part of reaching the shared goal to get Nova Scotia off coal by 2030. Um, obviously, with respect to that, there are different viewpoints on this issue. Um, and uh, so certainly there's a balance between UARB and vendors of energy efficient products. So we just need to be um, aware of all the parties who are at the table and uh, get creative with that. Thirdly, I'll talk just a little bit about the recreation facility and feasibility study. That's very important to me um, for the town. And I believe that most of us around the council table are in support of, or at least uh, in spirit, uh, in support of some, for, some form of health and, and wellness facility. And there's work to be done on this. You know, certainly, um, you know, where the project's at now, I, I spoke a little bit with Councillor York last night as she's the representative on that committee. And she talked a little bit about where Sierra was at and their needs assessments that they're doing, um, working on the assessment piece and as well as the user groups involved. Uh, obviously, a facility of this nature is, is costly to build um, and costly to maintain. So the key will be, you know, determining the operating costs and, and how those such costs are divided amongst partners. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the accessibility action plan. Um, that's an, a very important item for me as we move forward as a town. Um, privileged to work on that uh, committee, the Kempel Inclusion an access advisory committee uh, with Councillor Maxwell is also on that committee with me. Um, uh, so uh, as outlined in that in the action plan, Nova Scotia has the highest rate of persons with disabilities in Canada. In fact, it's one in three. So, um, you know, in looking at in covering off items such as physical, visual, hearing, mental health, 
And so here in the town of Kempel, we certainly want to look at this as a wide spectrum and uh, we've chosen to include diversity and inclusion in relation to accessibility as they really do go hand in hand. So I would encourage citizens um, and any, anyone who's interested in this document to read it. It's an excellent document. It's a lot of reading. I think it's 113 pages, um, but certainly it's a, it's a great report and we're prepared to use those standards um, in conjunction with the Government of Canada and also with the Rick Hansen Foundation. It's a human right, accessibility is, and I want to see all aspects of this plan applied to our breath of fresh air town. I see the AT plan um, as a key piece to accessibility in as much as it covers items like connectivity, social interaction, green spaces, and, uh, and the list goes on. It's important to note that citizen engagement was a crucial piece uh, to the creation of this plan. And so that's something I am very passionate about um, with regard to that plan. So those would be my four items. And I, I like to end on uh, saying, I think we have uh, a vibrant town, a town that's growing uh, capacity beyond. And uh, I'm privileged to serve with everyone. And uh, I'm just very proud of where we are today, so. I hope I'm under seven minutes. <laughs> you had one minute left. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Maxwell. Thank you. Um, well, we were asked, I just want to read the goal again, to uh, present our ideas or goal for Kentville, what we want to be champions for and what we want to accomplish. That was, that was the goal. And as I pondered this task, uh, there was a lot of things that came, that came to mind. The most important goal that I have for this town and I've always had is the uh, building of a regional recreation facility. Um, it was top of my mind when I ran for election the first time around, and it's still top of my mind this time around. Uh, it's been a desire for myself and many, many people in Kentville for many years, way back as far as I can remember as a teen, uh, working at the Kentville swimming pool, we all wanted an indoor pool. And, uh, and that desire has just grown with both myself and the public. Um, basically my 35 years as a physical education teacher and, and my recreation background uh, was something that uh, I thought I could contribute to this. And uh, so unfortunately, as we all know, I was kept off that committee and my voice silenced. And uh, so that makes me very reluctant to present any suggestions. Um, to this administration, because I just feel that anything that I say is going to be ignored. That's how I feel. That's the way I've been treated. So I'm going to try and be optimistic. And I am going to throw out some ideas out there and we'll just see where they land. Um, I will say I'm very interested in the committee work that I have um, working with the, the uh, accessibility and, and uh, committee, uh, as well as uh, at, uh, Annapolis Valley Trails and uh, my other, my other uh, committees. Um, and I'm interested in advancing all of those projects as well. Um, I have uh, suggested in the past, and I will suggest again, uh, that we put a solar power project in Memorial Park. And uh, I believe that this is an excellent location because it's not treed, it's wide open, and a nice uh, solar panel project there could uh, give us all the power we need to look after all those facilities that are sitting out there, as well as provide uh, some income and revenue uh, through the winter and fall months when our those, those um, those facilities are no longer um, in operation. Um, I think the top of the pool house is uh, an exceptional place to put it. And uh, so I'm just gonna throw that out there again as a possible uh, green energy project that I have felt for a long time um, was perfect for the town of Kentville. Um, I'm also extremely interested in championing, championing infrastructure uh, projects over the next 
next couple of years. And I have uh, some that are really uh, ones that I believe that we should be taking note of. Um, the McDonald Avenue, Brayside Drive and Henry Street area has been um, overlooked for many, many years. And the infrastructure, underground inf infrastructure and paving and curbing and so on uh, really needs to be done in that area. It's similar to Burke subdivision. It's been promised and promised and promised and nothing has happened. And it was interesting today to notice that we have a water main break up there. So um, that was on my list and then there we are um, with the proof in the pudding, so to speak. Uh, Chestnut Place Road needs, uh, needs paving. Cornwallis Street sidewalk needs replacement. Uh, we need to extend the sidewalk on Chester Avenue to the town line. Um, there are people that, it, that are still living in Kenfold but cannot access anything because they have to walk along that busy, I would almost call it a highway, um, that New Ross Road, and uh, it's dangerous. And there's kids living out there. And it needs, I know it's part of our active transportation project, but it's, it's a, an important piece that, that I think needs to be done sooner rather than later. Um, the sidewalk to Klondike uh, in Chestnut Place uh, needs to be replaced as well. And uh, the street there, um, as I said, Chestnut Place Road needs paving. So we have an awful lot of old infrastructure in the town. It's uh, been put on the back burner for far too long. And, uh, and I think it's time to um, really take a serious look at that and, uh, and start to spruce up our, our infrastructure a bit. Um, finally, I will say that I will promise to champion any project that anybody brings forward um, that I believe is in the best interest of this town. And, uh, and I would never uh, hold back something that I felt uh, would benefit the entire town of Kentville. So um, I'm throwing those out there and we'll see where they land. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Huntley. Thank you very much. Uh, if you would keep me on time, that would be great. Thank you. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that um, I'm sure we would all like to do, but one of the things when we talk about strategic planning, I've picked one thing, and that would be like to be my focus is uh, housing, affordable, equitable housing for all. It's a right, and um, everybody deserves a home. And, but you know, when I looked at it, I'm sure there's a lot of things that I'll miss here today, but what I try to do is make some points. And um, I said, you know, I think we need an equitable housing strategy aligning the values and policies and investments. And it can take us one step further as it incorporates our values of inclusion, equal access to opportunity and the diversity in our committees. I looked at, uh, if we look at some of the committees we have right now, and you know, even the departments that are in the town of Kempel, uh, just to list a few, uh, King's Transit, Diversity, the Inclusion and Access Advisory Committee, uh, the Policing Department, Planning, um, Parks and Rec, Public Works, and that's really just to name a few. Uh, we have some great programs here right now that I feel really likes and loves to actually support us. Uh, we think of Annapolis Valley Chamber of Commerce, you know, when you look at their mission, it's, you know, building the most dynamic region. Uh, Valley uh, REN, the Regional Enterprise Network. They talk about supporting the financial, social, and well-being of the people, businesses, and communities um, who they serve in the Annapolis Valley. And also, when you think about KBC, the KBC organization has a lot of goals, not just to uh, help businesses, but it's people in general. But all their goals, I feel, ties into what we are trying to do. And I thought what I would do is um, talk about the benefits um, not just as everybody needs a home. What I thought about was uh, pride of ownership, uh, employment and jobs, uh, economic growth. So it'll boost consumer spending and the general tax revenue. Urban planning, climate plan driven, uh, improves mental health and quality of life. And when you know, when you look at, you hear the words quality of life, you can go back and tie that into Kentville's planning goals of vision healthy, vibrant, you know, their goal is working towards, everybody's working towards this goal of 2030 for whatever plan they have. Uh, attract and retain essential workers, uh, more opportunity to start a new life, owning, renting, a new job, uh, bringing your family here. It's critical for children's health and well-being. It lowers the crime rate. 
Uh, it takes stress off local programs such as food banks, uh, less traffic congestion, uh, working closer to home, less travel. And um, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, a, a person and he talked about him and his partner who had just moved to Kempfell a few weeks ago. And the joke was he loves to cook. Uh, supper wouldn't be on the table till 536. His partner was able to walk home from work, didn't realize the time was only 20 after four and was looking for supper. And they both laughed and he said, well, supper's not till 530. And it wasn't until then they realized the pleasure of being able to live and work so closely together. And I thought that was an important story to hear. The other thing I, I love is it reduces segregation in communities because everybody knows this is the goal we need to be working towards. And yes, it's bigger than council for sure. However, I think it should be at council's top of mind because within the next five years, the growth in this town is going to be crazy. Then I looked at, uh, okay, all that is great. Uh, you know, where do we go next and who's involved? And for anybody who knows about any of the things that I do on the side about fundraising or whatever, helping the community, I like to be able to speed the process up, maybe take away some red tape. How do we do it? Um, there's a lot I would have to learn in that for sure. But you know what? Who's involved? The CAO, council, town staff, developers and builders, trades, uh, the support from trade schools. I think we have opportunities there. The support for mentoring plus municipal and provincial support, meeting with the Minister of Housing and Municipal Affairs. And I think what we need is an ad hoc advisory committee. And that committee, um, I don't think it should be any less than three, but no more than five members. Um, and the chair should be a counselor. Um, but I think coming to the table, it should be all walks of life that are included. Um, even if we had focus groups and community group workshops, we need to make sure there's people at the table there from, uh, you know, families of four to a single mom to um, whatever. Okay, so everybody's involved because it is, um, it's one goal. And if there's anything, I've, uh, I've probably uh, drove my CAO crazy about how many meetings I've already said, can we meet, can we meet, can we meet? And it's always about housing, homes. And sometimes we also need to talk about People talk about affordable housing, but what is the meaning of affordable housing? And because there's different types of, of, of housing, there's social housing. There's, so of course I went to Google. That's pretty much what I tried to do to make it as simple as I could. And you know, it's housing that a household can pay for while still having money left over and other necessities like food, transportation and healthcare. That means what's affordable depends on a household income. Well, of course. However, how do we help others to make that a little simpler? And I think all that would tie into a strategic plan for us. And um, I think all the little bullet points are there, it's just finding a way to marry it to what we already have. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gerard. Thank you, Worship. Um... I've got a few bullet points. Um, some are old that 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 I had uh, for the for the uh, five years ago. Uh, some are new. Uh, some are expanding. So, number one uh, for me is zoning and planning. Um, Kentville has large areas of land which are prime for development. Um, with the the latest boom in uh, in uh, in housing in Kentville. Uh, and the untapped resource of the land to our south. Um, it's exciting because it is virgin land. And if we have a vision, uh, we can explore things that have never been done. Um, the, the, what I envision up there is a huge multifamily uh, residential living area with some shops. Uh, and that's, that, that is something that historically has come up against um, uh, people that don't like it because people don't like mixing single family homes with uh, multifamily or multi-unit uh, developments. Done right, I think it can be a, a wonderful thing and, and you, can, you can draw more people into Kentville. Um, Another thing 
that was on my plate before, near and dear to my heart, is um, maintaining historical characters in, uh, in, in the buildings that we have in Kentville. Um, I think we need policies in place that will ensure the preservation of uh, historical buildings in Kentville. Uh, we still have a lot of them left. A lot of them are gone, but we still have a lot of them left. We also have to have policies in place to keep future development um, in, uh, I don't wanna say in, in accordance, but to, to, to make sure that future developments complement the, uh, the, uh, the historic areas of the town. Um, uh, another thing that would be a top priority for me is uh, to collaborate with innovators and draw those people to town to make uh, true renewable energy a reality. Uh, we've got a lot of things now. We've got solar and we've got wind, um, but it's any research I've done on it, it's it's fine and it's what we've got for now. Um, there is a trade-off that the fossil fuels needed um, to, to build the infrastructure for that um, is, is close to, if not the same as um, the, the savings that we get for, uh, for, for the future of, uh, of, of those things. Um, Attracting new business to town. We have done a wonderful job. The town has, KBC has, and individual business owners have done a wonderful job bringing uh, new businesses to town. We have to keep that momentum going. Um, I can remember as a kid growing up in town where Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, um, the town was bustling with shoppers and Christmas time was exceptional. Um, don't get me wrong, the, the business and professional, or sorry, the professional and service sector of the town is wonderful. They draw a lot of people to town, uh, but we need to draw a crowd to town so the town is busy from the time we get up until, uh, you know, later on at night. Right now, after five o'clock, things really slow down in the town, and it would be nice to see retail that, that, uh, that stays open later. Um, policing, policing in the town of Kentville in the future, um, the economics of policing, we're going to have to look and try and, and be innovative in things that we do. Um, there's been talk previously of um, making the police force, and there's been talk with other areas of making the police force um, sort of an income stream for the town because um, let's face it, small town policing is expensive. Um, we have had talks previously with, uh, with, with other, other areas locally who were interested in possibly looking at, um, you know, uh, borrowing our service or, or using our service. We've got a great police force, let's face it. Um, and we are the envy of a lot of small towns um, in this area. Uh, and one last thing I have, which a few others had, but it's, it's probably one of the most important things is infrastructure. Uh, and it's the stuff that's under the ground. We are a town that was incorporated, I think in 1887. And we have infrastructure, some of it that 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 goes back that far. Um, for a small town, we're in really good shape financially, but one catastrophic uh, break of something can uh, can use up a lot of resources to fix. Um, so, I guess of 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 all the things I'd like to see is that we maintain money in the bank to. Uh, to, to fix things that we need to be fixed. And like other councillors have said, um, instead, of, instead of necessarily waiting for the federal money to come in, which is wonderful, um, we, we, put, uh, we put upgrades of subdivisions and roads and underground infrastructure 
uh, on a list and we stick to that list. Thank you. Thank you. All right, somebody's got to time me. Over the next two years of the current mandate of this council, I propose the following. We've already supported the development work to grow Kenfield. The reality is that we have the potential to be double in size by 2050, and we should commit dedicated funding to this development to leverage other government funding. Part of this work would include the establishment of a planning advisory committee, which would report to council on planning matters that are within the authority and purview of council approval. This committee work would be, would be done as required, focused on timely review and reporting to council to ensure that de developers are kept informed and council is provided with all the necessary information to make informed decisions. Next is a focus on asset management and ensuring the preliminary work, which has occurred over the past 16, 18 months is brought to council for approval. Additionally, that asset management plan would become an integral part of our five-year capital plan with emphasis on renewing our infrastructure with the intent of extending life cycle and reducing costs. We would commit dedicated funding to this plan to leverage other government funding. On the recreation front, pending the outcome of the recreation facility study, there should be a commitment to the renewal of Centennial Arena. Regardless of the outcome of this study, we are six to 10 years out from a new building and improvements to the arena would not only re renew it, but extend its life cycle. The establishment of a PACE program to provide education and support to our taxpayers in pursuit of green energy choices. I also believe that taxpayers who make big changes adopting green energy, reducing water use, reducing greenhouse gas emissions should be incentivized for their commitment through property tax rebates. The province of Alberta has done a great deal of work on localized electricity generation through community solar. And based on the announcement by Nova Scotia Power this weekend, perhaps this is a way around their latest statement. There are incentives at both levels of government to fund this type of development. If developers are encouraged to build energy efficient homes, we can easily achieve the 2050 greenhouse gas emission goals of net zero. 64% of our greenhouse gas in Kings County comes from building energy use. Additionally, we should monetize the green space that we have to fund this work. The gorge and the ravine are examples of urban forests, which could provide offset, carbon offset credits to other entities. And we should also create a tree policy to protect our old growth. We should also consider building a biodigester for our sewage. This would have the effect of not only generating electricity, but reducing methane gas, making the process of sewage more effective and efficient, and providing the town with control over the process. Continued focus on regional economic development. The town of Kentville has optimized economic development through a three-tiered approach, where the business community, KBC, takes care of existing businesses. The town works at developing Kentville as a place to live and grow and maximizing the effect of Valley Regional Network to leverage funding and economic opportunities that would not other, otherwise be available to us, such as the STAR program. And this is what I have to offer. So thank you very much uh, to our, uh, our citizens. Uh, we thank you for uh, bearing with us uh, over the last uh, 55 minutes. And uh, if you have any input, uh, we appreciate uh, what you have to say on the matter. And, uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. What will happen from here is a document uh, will come together, council will meet, we will prioritize things. There's you, you, you've heard more times than enough. Uh, there's a lot of similarity in, in what we've said. And a lot of these things, we already have plans in place that are going to take care of them. So it's a matter of, uh, of putting everything in a row and prioritizing, uh, putting budgets, policy, uh, procedures in place uh, to move forward. Uh, so we are looking forward. And, uh, you know, I have to say that, uh, um, you know, for the most part, council is, uh, is very optimistic uh, about the next two years. So again, thank you very much. And uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to accept the councillor and mayor's reports as circulated, please. Councillor York and a seconder. 
Deputy Mayor, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Councillor and Mayor's reports be accepted as circulated. All those in favor? Those opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. We'll move on to our new business. Um, the UARB has advised that man mandatory boundary review is due in 2022. And CAO Troke, if you could give us an update on this matter. Thank you, Mayor Snow. So on December 10th, the, 10th, the Utility Review Board uh, sent a note to the CAOs that the review, the boundary review be happening in 2022. Um, so uh, ever since 2006, these reviews occur every eight years. And um, basically what you're required as a municipal unit to have this to the utility review board before the end of the year. And uh, so the process for doing this work is it's very prescriptive. Um, it's within the Municipal Government Act, which it includes public consultation, uh, research, and then there's a full reports required on two topics. One is the number of councillors and the other is the geographic boundary. So those are the two components. So basically uh, tonight, I want to first make council aware that there was a requirement that we would complete this process by the end of the year. And that what I would propose is um, as the CAO, I'd like to have permission from council to reach out and have some conversations with those who are consultants who do this kind of work. So I can come back with some general information to council around things like costs and are there any components that perhaps we would do internally, but due to the nature of this work where it talks about the number of representatives around the boundaries, um, it is probably one of those things where a third party, an objective third party kind of providing just the general information on this back is the way that most municipal units would likely go. So um, tonight one, wanted to make council aware of this requirement, which I was uh, received information from the utility review board. Um, there were documents uh, provided to Council around the 2014 and the 2016 uh, reviews. Um, so tonight, if Council, I'm looking to direct uh, myself as the CAO to engage some of the consulting community so I can kind of collect some information and bring some information back to Council with the idea that we'd be able to use some of their expertise in order to complete our 2022 Municipal Boundary Review. Thank you, uh, CAO. So if, uh, if we took your recommendation to motion that council direct the CAO to consult with consultants to collect information uh, for council on the 2022 municipal boundary review. If uh, I could have someone move that, please. I'll move. Yeah. Councilor Gerard and uh, for the second deputy mayor, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that council direct the CAO to consult with consultants to collect information for council on the 2022 municipal boundary review. Discussion, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship. CAO Troke, um, what, what sort of count, consultant would that be? Um, because I, I know you're, you know you're talking about boundaries, but you're also talking about um, the amount of folks that serve on council and sort of a combination of things. So I'm just kind of wondering, you know, what, what type of person or, or what would their qualifications be? Just so I could have a better idea. Sure thing. So, I mean, first for myself, um, I would want to go back and actually look at the last reviews that were done here in the town and look at any of those individuals who were involved in providing the information and providing the advice to council. So there's kind of a consistency measure here. Mm -hmm. um, but then also we have the ability to reach out beyond kind of the local perspective and see how some of these boundary reviews are, are continuing in other parts of the province. I know in some places, um, you know, there is a lot of pressure because of increasing population on do you have your representation right? Mm -hmm. And as, as the staff person of, of council, it's very difficult for me to be able to kind of provide that advice on do you need an additional counselor or so on. So mm -hmm. I want to kind of get a flavor on, on some of that work that's been done in those other areas and uh, kind of be able to kind of bring back that envelope of what we're seeing back to council. So you would be able to kind of uh, get a sense on, on that. So in short, I don't have specific organizations. This is kind of the start of this work for me. As I said, in the MGA, it's fairly um, prescriptive in the things you need to do, but I suspect that there's a lot of things that are probably happening in a few other 
jurisdictions here within Nova Scotia that we could probably glean uh, some information from them on how, how they're moving forward with theirs as well. Okay, great, thank you. Solicitor. Uh, just specifically to the Deputy Mayor's question about the types of organizations that do this, Stantec did it for the municipality of the County of Kings last time around, for example. And just to be clear, I, because I, I know it's clear to council, but it might not be clear to the public, the boundary review is only with respect to electoral districts. It's not the boundary of the town of Kenfield. The town of Kenfield doesn't presently have electoral districts. Um, the public might have thought we were talking about the boundaries of the town. This is about electoral districts and whether the town should have them or not after it's evaluated uh, what the right number of representatives is. Thank you. Thank you, solicitor. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Are we ready for the question? The question is that council direct the CAO to consult with consultants to collect information for council on the 2022 municipal boundary review. Deputy Mayor, how say you? Yes. Councilor Gerard? Yes. Councilor Huntley? Yes. Councilor Maxwell? Councilor York? Yes. Councillor Zabian? Yes. And I say yes, the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, no correspondence. Um, public uh, input, uh, CAO, is there anything? I don't see anything coming up. All right, the council has a legal matter which must be conducted in the closed session. We require a motion to go into the closed session to discuss the agenda item. We will not be returning to Facebook Live for the completion of the meeting or adjournment. Um, so if we could uh, move into a closed session to discuss the agenda item, someone could move that. Move. Councillor York, thank you. And deputy, I've got you for the second. It has been moved and seconded that council move into a closed session. The question is on adoption of the motion to move into a closed session. All those in favor? Those opposed, the motion is carried and the time is 7.01. Staff, thank you very much.